bring in from the Fitzgerald Group, uh, their principal, Keith Fitzgerald, along with TJM Institutional Services Director, Jim Ariel. Guys, uh, you know, we've be we're, we're beginning to, with the, let's begin with the decline of growth names. It's been a common theme, obviously. It's knocked the NASDAQ uh, composite for a complete loop. Now, was this simply overdue? Uh, or will it be short-lived? And, and many people want to know, do we re rotate even at this point into the physical world? Jim, let me start with you, your thoughts. Well, you, you said the word punished, and I, I don't think that's accurate. I think we're just, uh, we're not focused on them anymore because this is a huge transition period. You mentioned that number tomorrow. I think it's going to be an indication that we are actually moving from that digital work from home world. And that's why we stuffed all that money into those names over the time, particularly those those five uh, FANG names. And right now, it doesn't seem like going forward, we're going to need that as much. It's just a crowded trade. They're still wonderful names, as was evidenced by their earnings. But each one of them rallied off their earnings and then was hit afterwards, indicated to me that it was a, a bit of a crowded trade. So I think it's a wonderful thing. I think the market is saying we're going back to reality. My daughter works for a big, huge blue blood Chicago company. They just were told this morning that they're going back to the office August 2nd. I think a lot of companies are going to follow suit. Jim, though, when your daughter goes back to the office, won't they be using Microsoft products and Amazon Cloud and some of these other things, uh, uh, Paycom and, and ServiceNow, won't they still be using those things? Well, sure. We're never going to go back to analog. I mean, we they're huge. The question just, had they run up too far too fast and had they become okay. a storage of wealth? over the time, and I believe that's it. People just ran to them because they were like a risk-off asset, and I think we're just taking some of that froth off. So I think the NASDAQ should underperform. Wow. So, Keith, your thoughts here? Uh, NASDAQ underperform, or you think uh, maybe it's time to start nibbling here? Well, respectfully, I get what Jim's saying loud and clear, but I couldn't disagree more strongly. Blue jeans, gas pumps, carpets, those things are rounding error in the scheme of things. You're talking about Apple making $691,000 every 60 seconds. It's a matter of scale. And if you're an investor, do you want to trade on blue jeans or do you want to go for the person who's going into the store to buy the blue jeans is carrying the iPhone, carrying the Droid, using the Microsoft, using the cell services, using Visa, using MasterCard. That's the technology you want to focus on. The physical world is simply over at skis right now. Respectfully, yeah, uh, I was more less talking about blue jeans than I was more talking about things like gold and silver, which are rallying nicely today. Things like crude it. oil, which has come around too. Yes. So on blue jeans, I'm wearing blue jeans right now, but I don't have very strong opinion on them particularly. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, you mentioned uh, gold, uh, uh, Jim. Gold finally back above 1800. It's making something of a stealth rally here. Uh, is that a, uh, is that now becoming perhaps a preferred hedge against inflation? I think it is too, and I think because you know crypto, I, I, crypto has not run its course. Crypto has become a two trillion dollar market too, and I think that's taken a lot of the oomph out of gold and silver as a traditional dollar hedge over the last year. I think today gold pushed above that 1800 level, and I think that was a big deal, and that's going to put it uh, squarely on a lot of people's radar right now, me particularly. That's right. aside from scalping today, that's the only medium to longer term trade I made today was to buy gold. Can, uh, Keith, Jim, do me a favor, stay right there, guys, because I want to also mention today uh, we saw the initial jobless claims swoon down to the 498,000. That's the lowest since last March. But yeah, I want to bring back Keith and Jim. All right, guys, uh, handicap this for the audience. Keith, let me start with you. Above a million jobs, what does the market do? Below a million jobs, what does the market, what's the market's reaction? Well, I got to tell you, Charles, I'm not even remotely smart enough to answer that question. This is why I watch your show. Um, I, I think that the Fed is... <laughs> well, I guess it's a good news, news, good news, good news, or bad news, good news kind of scenario. Well, that's the danger, right? That's the meme. And I think Jim was alluding to it, you know, in, the, in our last hit here. You know, what's good is bad and what's bad is good. If if the number's really strong, then, of course, fears come in that Team Powell is going to do something foolish. If the number's weak, then we get a yelling response. So I think what you got to do is really focus on what the market is telling you, not what trying to predict where it's going to go next, because you might as well go to Vegas if that's the case. <laughs> Well, then, Jim, uh, you know, uh, Keith brought up the earnings that Apple's making, how much money they make every second. Right now, we know for a fact the market is completely ignore, ignoring, in some cases, even completely discounting these amazing earnings that we're getting. But what about second quarter estimates? They have now surged to 61 percent year over year growth. I mean, when does that start to matter to the market? When does the market pivot to what normally is the mover of markets, and that's earnings and guidance? Yeah, but it's not earnings and, and P.E. ratios right now 
you know, we're, we're stretched quite a bit. There's a lot of emotion that's trading in this market and a lot of belief that the Fed is going to stay easy and the federal government is going to start, uh, is going to continue spending, which you alluded to before a little bit too. When we talked about that jobs number tomorrow, if it's above a million, I think it quickly needs assurance from the Fed that they're going to continue ignoring inflation or not seeing inflation, whatever it is they call it. But I think uh, <laughs> yeah, our earnings are going to be good, but the question is, can they catch up to where prices are right now. So I don't know that it matters all that much. And we saw that trial balloon floated up by Yellen this week, and that was a big deal. And she's just mentioned the words that rates might have to go up. She's not even on the Fed, and it knocked the market down 2.5% pretty darn quickly. So I think that's what's going to matter. Yeah, the market went down 2.5%. The VIX, or the fair index, went up 19% in a nanosecond. I guess, Keith, that's, the, that's another big question here. And, uh, you know, listen, Jerome Powell, he has bent over backwards. He has said it, done it. He's been juggling. He's done everything, right, to say, say to the world, say to the markets, he's going to keep rates low, keep accommodation going. Uh, so, so does he have to prove himself over and over again? Well, I think I think he does, Charles. I think he's boxed in, you know. And and again, Jim, I, I agree with Jim on this. You know, whether they're ignoring it, overlooking it, selectively viewing it, inflation's real, and we feel it in our wallets. I think the question is sure, really, how sure. does that impact the markets? And the conjecture is that anybody that's highly leveraged is going to get hit. So again, that's a buying opportunity in the scheme of things for me because the rest is just short-term noise. And frankly, I hope it's a good number because millions of people need to go back to work, right. and I want to see that reflected in the data. But by the way, I'm with you. I'm thinking over a million and good news will be good news. 30 seconds. You just mentioned buying a dip. What are you buying? Did you buy anything today? Are you looking at anything to share with us real quick, Keith? You know, I reloaded on Palantir. I'm getting smacked around something fierce like a lot of people are right now. Apple, uh, Microsoft, Pfizer in particular as well. I didn't make a move there yet, but uh, that's of extreme interest to me. All right. And of course, uh, Jim, I know you picked up some gold. Gold stocks, by the way, looking very attractive down here as well. Jim, Keith, fantastic conversation, gentlemen. Thank you both very much. And of course, Thanks we're going to stay on these markets, including...